What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. It's been almost two weeks since iOS 16 was revealed and just like with every major iOS release, I'm discovering tons of new features and changes every single day that I use the software. So in this episode, we're gonna cover even more of those additional new features and changes. We're gonna touch on some annoying bugs. We're gonna talk battery life. We're gonna talk about when to expect beta two and the public beta and more. And after we discuss the software, we're going to discuss the upcoming iPad and iPad Pro, an OLED MacBook Air that's in the works, a big lawsuit against Apple about battery life, and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. And if you would like to become a YouTube channel member, you will see this episode a day early. All right, so let's start off with even more iOS 16 features and changes. And the first one is this right here, a new alert when we have low battery on our iPhone. So you can see now if you unlock your phone when you have under 20% or under 10% battery, you can see that the alert now shows the exact battery percentage instead of just saying 20% battery remaining. So before, if you had like 19 or 18% battery remaining, it would just show 20% because it would be under that 20% threshold. But now it shows the exact amount of battery that you have. Also, if your iPhone gets too hot, it will stop charging and it will give you a new alert that says charging will resume when iPhone returns to normal temperature. So that is also new in iOS 16. In Safari, if we go to the share sheet right here and then go to find on page, you will see next to the magnifying glass right there, we have a little arrow. If we tap on that, we now have two new options for whole words or match case. So you have more specific parameters for finding a specific word or phrase on a web page. In the messages application, we now have a new contact UI. So if I go ahead and start typing out a contact, like if I wanted to mention a contact in a group chat, I can do that and you can see that is the new UI there. Looks much better than it did in iOS 15. Also in iOS 16, we're now able to convert pretty much anything. So if I typed in 100 degrees and I just put 100 degrees right there, if I go ahead and I'll just type in, let's say 76 km. So we just type two things right here. Both of these are able to be converted into another metric. So if I go ahead and tap on the 100 right there, you can see I now get the option to convert to Celsius, Fahrenheit, or degrees. And then also the 76 km, you can see I could convert that from kilometers to meters to miles all right there. And if I tap on miles, it will copy that right to my clipboard and I can go ahead and paste that. And of course, once I type that in, I can tap on that again to convert it. So you can convert pretty much anything. You can do it with currencies, with times, pretty much anything here in iOS 16. It's really awesome. You can also convert from photos or screenshots as well. So you can see right here, I have 73 degrees on the screenshot. If I go ahead and tap and hold on that, you can see I get the option to convert it right there. So you could also do this for languages. So if you saw something in another language, you could select it and translate it right there from a photo. So you can see I can translate that right here to Spanish or I can change the language to any of these languages right here, straight from a photo or video. It's pretty awesome. In the weather application, we can now add up to 50 cities instead of 20, like we were limited to in iOS 15. We also have a new UI for alerts. So if I go to somewhere that has an alert right now, if we go ahead and tap on that, you can see it pulls up this new UI here for alerts like severe weather or tornadoes or hurricanes. You can see it has this alert right here. And down at the bottom, you will have the urgency, the affected area, all of that right there. You also have a link at the very bottom here that will take you to the National Weather Service. If you tap on that, you can see it takes you to weather.gov. Another change is that if you copy and paste text from one third party application to another, you get a new prompt. So if I go ahead and paste this right here. You can see this is a new prompt that says Amazon would like to paste from Twitter and you have the option to not allow the paste or allow it. So you now get a new alert if you copy and paste from one third party app to another. And I found this to be kind of hit or miss. It wouldn't work in certain applications. Like for instance, it didn't work with Reddit and a couple of other apps. So it seems to be, you know, kind of buggy right now. Now, if we head into our settings and go down to accessibility to touch, and then all the way down to lock to end call, that is a new toggle here in iOS 16. And it's very simple. Press the side button to end the current call. So now you no longer need to rely on other methods to do that. You now have an option to just lock to end the call. You could do it before, but there was never a toggle for it in settings. Apple also just recently announced that they're gonna be showing all MLS Major League Soccer games around the world for the next 10 years, beginning next year in 2023. So you can see here, Apple posted a press release on this, and it says, in a historic first for sports, Fans can stream every single MLS match 
through the Apple TV app without any local blackouts or restrictions. And this contract is gonna go from early 2023 until 2032. And this is major, and it's all gonna be right here in the TV application, which is just awesome. Now, as far as bugs go, there are quite a few bugs here in iOS 16. Of course, it is the very first beta. We're expecting to see quite a few bugs, but I've noticed even more since my last video. So the first one, if I go and turn off my focus mode right here, I did notice also if you have the focus mode turned on, it makes your lock screen like even even darker than it was in iOS 15, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, just something I noticed. But the Earth and the Moon wallpapers here on the lock screen are pretty blurry. I mean, you can see right there, I know it's not supposed to be perfect, but they are pretty blurry. So I would hope to see some type of improvement to the quality of the earth and moon on the lock screen. I know a lot of people have messaged me about that. I have noticed it myself here as well. And while we're on the lock screen, I should also mention that, that the same bug I mentioned last weekend happened again just yesterday. It really happens like every other day, but my lock screen wallpaper just doesn't come back. After I exit out of sleep mode, like if I just wake up, I go into my control center, I turn off sleep mode, and then I go back to my lock screen, my lock screen is just completely black. And then I go to my home screen and my home screen is also completely black. And for whatever reason, turning that focus mode off just completely removes my background image for my home screen and my lock screen, which is just really weird. Some users are also having issues with app store applications, just simply not installing. So I've had quite a few people say that they were not able to install applications on iOS 16 until they rebooted their device. So that's another bug here in beta one. I've not experienced that myself, but I know several of you guys have. Another very popular complaint is Apple Music. So Apple Music is crashing quite a bit. And I can attest to this because I do use Apple Music every single day. And I have noticed that it lags and just crashes pretty constantly. At least once a day, it crashes for me. Also, the music widget sometimes does not show the current song that's playing. Sometimes it will show an old song. Sometimes even one time I had it show a random song in my library when I had a song currently playing. It was on a HomePod, but still it showed a random song playing here in the widget, which is kind of strange. Oh, and speaking of music, some people with CarPlay also say that the audio kind of turns fuzzy and crackly after listening for a while. So there seems to be a bug with CarPlay as well that affects the audio quality. And then of course, one of my biggest complaints is the fact that we cannot disable a focus mode from the lock screens. If I go into my by recording a video right here. There is no way to turn this off. We do see it shows our focus mode down here, but when you tap on that, it does absolutely nothing. So I do hope that Apple brings that back, the option to turn on or off a focus mode from the lock screen. And then also the heat issue has not really improved any since last week. My phone is still getting pretty hot. I mean, just doing this video so far, you know, my phone is getting hot on the back and it really shouldn't, especially a 13 Pro Max. It should not be getting hot just from doing you know, basic things, you know, I'm not really doing any type of gaming or anything intensive, and it's still getting pretty warm, which of course does affect the battery life. And speaking of that battery life, battery life, you know, nothing's really changed in the last week. It's still pretty bad on my 13 Pro Max and my iPad Pro, the two main devices I'm using this on. I still have not installed this on my main phone, my iPhone 13 Pro, just because I don't want to have to put up with a really, really bad battery life and just decent performance and apps crashing and things like that. But battery life overall, like I said, I think the constant heating up, I think the constant crashing, all of that plays a role in the battery life just being very, very subpar at best. And then as far as the performance goes, performance, again, is also not so great because of all the crashes. And I do have random stutter. Sometimes the animation is just really laggy when it comes in here on my notification center or when I unlock my phone and go to the home screen. Sometimes it'll be really laggy. It almost looks like 60 hertz when I'm on a 120 hertz screen. So just things like that performance, you know, you're not really expecting the best with beta one, but still, you know, it feels like a beta one if I had to say it, you know, in just a couple of words. Oh, but one thing I did want to mention about the performance is that I did actually notice an improvement to the RAM management issue. So I talked about this last weekend, but I said that there seems to be a really bad RAM management issue because my applications just would not stay open long at all. Like almost every time I open up an application, I would go into another app and then come back like within 10 minutes and I would have to relaunch it. Well, that's actually improved here this week for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because I rebooted or you know my, my device is just done re-indexing or what, but the RAM management does seem to be a little bit better so far. So performance, still not great, but I will say it's better than last week. All right, so now let's talk about what is next for Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 16 beta two. And I've had so many questions about this over the past couple of weeks. So next week is when we should be seeing iOS 16 beta two. 
Now, it could come as early as Monday, June 20th, because that would be exactly two weeks from when we saw iOS 16 there on June 6th. However, Apple doesn't usually release betas on a Monday, so I don't think it's very likely to come on the 20th. It's possible, but really any day after that, that week is more likely. Maybe the 21st, the 22nd, or the 23rd, I would say are more likely. And then for the public beta, that's coming out two weeks after beta two, most likely, maybe two to three weeks after, because beta three is going to come on the week of July 4th. And then after that, the week after, is when we should see the public beta. So maybe right here, on July 11th, the week of July 11th. And that is when a lot of people are gonna start installing iOS 16 because it is the free you know, way to do it. And it's also going to be a more stable release by that point, you know, because Apple deems it more safe for the majority of people to install. Now, also, we do have iOS 15.6 beta 4, and that could be coming out next week as well. I actually would expect it to come out next week as well. So it might be on the same day as iOS 16 beta 2, or it could just be like a day after. So just keep that in mind. I know 15.6 is pretty boring, but we are still seeing releases for that. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. First up, let's talk about the upcoming iPad 10 and the upcoming 2022 iPad Pro. So a new entry level iPad is coming later this year as always and this year it will include an A14 chip 5G and USB-C. So this is all according to 9to5Mac who reported on this earlier in the week. Now they do also say that it's going to feature a retina display with the same resolution as the iPad Air. And in terms of the design, they said this, we have no details on whether the 10th generation iPad will stick with the same old design or whether Apple will move to a more modern design matching iPad Air, Mini, and Pro. But based on what we know about the new display and connector, the design change seems likely. And then for the next iPad Pro, Mark Gurman reports that it is coming in September or October, and it's going to feature the M2 chip and wireless charging like we had heard earlier on. Now, we did also talk about a 14-inch iPad Pro in the previous episode, but that is not this one. This is, you know, that's coming in 2023. This is the one that's going to come with the same design as the previous generation iPad Pro, maybe just with a slightly smaller bezel and upgraded camera system. But yeah, that 14-inch iPad Pro, we're also hearing that it might not have the ProMotion display. So that's the one that we can expect to see next year. All right, so now let's talk about MacBooks because Ming-Chi Kuo just recently updated his outlook on the MacBook line. He said this, prediction updates. Number one, a new 15 inch MacBook would go to mass production in mid 2023 and launch date may be Q2 of 2023 or later. Number two, new 15 inch MacBook may offer two CPU options, an M2 with a 35 watt adapter and M2 Pro with a 67 watt adapter. And then number three, I haven't heard any plans for the rumored 12 inch MacBook yet. So we'll have to see how this plays out. But an M2 Pro, you know, chip on a 15 inch MacBook Pro sounds very, very intriguing. And I'm also interested to see more about that 12 inch MacBook, it's not really for me, but it is still something pretty interesting that Apple could explore. Now, Quo also just recently reported on the iPhone 14's front-facing camera, and it looks like this might be the biggest upgrade to that front-facing camera in years. So he published a piece on Medium outlining some of those changes. So he mentions that the front-facing camera will finally get autofocus, which is going to significantly improve the selfie and video performance, according to Quo. So the lens itself is also going to be upgraded. So I am expecting pretty much, you know, major improvements across the board on this year's iPhone in terms of the camera department on both the rear and the front. And speaking of MacBooks, we're also now hearing that a 13 inch MacBook Air with an OLED display could be coming in 2024. This according to Ross Young. So he said that OLED displays are going to be in three new devices, including an iPad Pro, and it's going to adopt a two stack tandem structure in which there are two red, green, and blue emissions layers, allowing for increased brightness and lower power consumption. And these devices would also have the LTPO display technology as well for ProMotion. So I cannot wait to see an OLED iPad Pro and also an OLED MacBook Air. Those are gonna be very interesting. So we're hearing 2024 for now. And then finally, let's talk about another Apple lawsuit. So they're facing a multi-million pound legal claim that could reimburse millions of iPhone users over a secret decision to slow down older phones in 2017. So 
We've heard this before, but it's coming to light yet again here in 2022. So I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was an update a while back that had an undocumented battery management system that would basically slow down the performance of older phones just to basically stop them from shutting down without warning and also from degrading the battery. But obviously there's no switch to turn that off. And a lot of people were very upset at Apple for this, and they're still paying for it several years later. And this lawsuit was filed by a consumer rights campaigner. And basically it says that if he wins, the company would be forced to pay damages of more than 750 million pounds spread out between approximately 25 million people who bought one of the affected phones. And it says the claim relates to the iPhone 6 the iPhone 6S, the iPhone SE, the 7, the 7 Plus, the 8 and 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10 models. And keep in mind, this was all the way back in 2011, so I'm not sure if this one's going to pass. And plus, Apple has already had to pay, you know, they had one where they had to pay $25 per iPhone, capped at $310 million in a settlement in March 2020. So they've already paid out you know, different lawsuits. They've already lost different lawsuits for the same exact thing. So I find it hard to believe that Apple's going to lose this one. But if they did, you may be getting some money in the mail just for free, just for owning one of these phones that was apparently affected with that iOS 11 software update. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on iOS 16. And of course, we are anticipating iOS 16 beta 2 this coming week. So that should be pretty exciting. But if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe for more ios 16 coverage but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon